Well, one of the other things that clearly seems to be happening is that all of our attention in India is starting to move to 2024. And that, of course, is the general election, which is just a few months away and is never far from people's mind. And over the next few months, we will, of course, continue to take a look at the key issues and some of the things that should be thought about there. Also means a lot of authors, a lot of books are going to start coming out about the 2024 elections and what the key highlights are. And one of the first of them, Modi 24, uh, just out from Minas Merchant, one of uh, the country's you know, best-known uh, journalists. He's been writing for more than for a long, long period of time. Founded and launched more than 10 magazines and done a, a number of, uh, of startups long before that term really became uh, particularly fashionable or popular. Minas Merchant now joins us. Thank you so much, Minas, to join us. I'm not going to ask you to predict exactly how many seats uh, which party is going to get in 2024, unless you feel you're in a good position to do that. Yeah, no, thank you, Vikram, for having me. Um, um, as far as the 2024 election is concerned, we've got an opposition, India, the acronym India, with 28 parties. When the book went into print two months ago, there were 26 parties. So on the back cover, you'll find the 26 party India acronym opposition. And now it's 28. And who knows, tomorrow it'll be 29 or 30. Um, I don't think the BJP should underestimate the power of a combined opposition. We've seen what happened in 2004 when the sort of precursor, in a way, of uh, India was the UPA. They got together 24 parties or about 21, 22 parties, and they managed to just get seven seats more than the, BJ, than the uh, BJP, 145 against 138. And with the help of the 59 left and the other UP allies, they managed to form a government against the popular trend. So the BJP cannot afford to be complacent. They think that uh, Mr. Modi is likely to win the election in 2024. I think he probably will because of not only the arithmetic, but the chemistry that he has. Uh, but the India acronym, India, is not something that one should underestimate. And that is, I think, the first thing uh, to be taken note of. As far as the second point, uh, very briefly, is that the opposition, and particularly Rahul Gandhi, the Congress, is making a mistake in attacking Modi personally. Because Modi knows from past experience in 2014, 2019, that whenever he's been attacked as Chaiwala by one of the senior Congress leaders, and in 2019, uh, Chokidar Chorhe by Rahul himself, it's backfired on, um, um, on the opposition, on the Congress. And they plummeted to 44 seats and then to 52 seats. So to attack Modi actually harms the attacker more than the attacked. And Modi is quite happy to be attacked. So Rahul, when he goes to Europe and he criticizes India in the hope that if you badmouth India and Hinduism and many of the other things about our country's progress, then you automatically say Modi is a bad leader and get rid of him in the next election. That's not the way it works. Right. It, and it, it backfires. Yeah. And actually, when you, when you, when you title your, your book, for example, Modi 24, is that a factor that... Certainly, Prime Minister Modi is going to almost try and make it a referendum about himself because his popularity, even after nine years, is still sky high. I mean, the, the, you'd look at any opinion poll, his personal popularity is still very high, certainly more than that of, of the BJP. And that's also one of the reasons why there's a difference between the national vote and the, and the state votes, which the opposition often wins the state votes, not necessarily at the national level. So Prime Minister Modi is going to make it a bit of a referendum around himself. That seems to be the general thrust of what your book is also. Yeah, actually, uh, Vikram, what's happened is that the whole acronym India, uh, which was um, decided upon at the end of July, uh, at the second meeting of, of the um, coalition, it was meant to actually convert India into you know, um, uh, a thing which nobody can vote against. Because after all, it's India, the name of the country. And therefore, uh, it was actually a brainwave. And everyone rushed from the 
26, then 26 party coalition to take credit for it. And you know, Mamta Banerjee said it was my idea, Rahul's people said, no, no, it was Rahul's idea. Nitish Kumar chipped in and said, no, no, I'm the one who actually suggested the name. It was meant to be a master stroke. And then what happened is Bharat came in. Bharat, the dinner invitation, G20, Bharat, when he went, uh, when the prime minister went uh, to South Africa for the BRICS summit, he was the prime minister of Bharat. So now it becomes a Bharat versus India uh, contest. So there are two contests, two twin contests going on. One is Modi versus the rest, that's 28 people. And in that, the mistake is that Modi versus 28 people. So he's a child and they are, you know, they, they are being dwarfed. Most elections actually are fought on the questions of, has my life actually got better? So in addition to those factors that you're talking about, and I don't doubt that any of them will be major factors, to what extent are the elections also going to be about, you know, what has happened on the economy, what's happened on unemployment, for example, and inflation and prices and the development that has happened and the digital infrastructure and what's... So the good and the bad about the actual business of government and how that has affected people's lives. Because then that's where you'll have a debate where you'll say, well, 80% was good or 20% was bad, and the opposition will say, no, 20% was good and 80% was bad. That's where the debate is sometimes when elections are being held. Will it be any of that, or is it going to be an election about personality? Yeah, I think, uh, I think um, uh, Vikram, you know, it's, it's something which is uh, very important to take note of. The kind of, um, of, of development that has taken place in the past nine and a half years is extraordinary. Um, in the first five-year term, and this is what I was told in 2014, um, Mr. Modi is very clear about this, he inherited an economy that was virtually broken. Between 2020, uh, 2012 and 2014, we know there was policy paralysis, the Anna Hazare movement had, had, had exposed corruption scandals, there was um, high inflation, no GDP growth. That's one aspect. Second thing is that in the second five-year term of Mr. Modi, uh, the focus has been on development, on consolidation, the infrastructure build-up, welfare benefits, water on tap, last mile electrification, the digitalization of the uh, economy, and housing, the mudra loans, and food subsidies. Incredible amount of development. All right, Minaz Merchant, thank you so much uh, for joining us to talk. Look, this is a subject we're going to go on talking about because it's going to be an important aspect of the India story what is going to be happening next year in the election. Thank you. So, Minas, thank you for joining us and really kick-starting all the debates around 2024 with the first book that is actually out there on, on, on the subject. Thanks a lot for joining us. Thank you very much.